Argentina have been flagging in their bid to qualify for South Africa 2010. Too many points dropped. It's time for their stars to live up to their reputation before the pressure takes its toll on Coach Basile. We're approaching the halfway stage in South America's World Cup qualifiers and we kick off in Argentina on the banks of the River Plate. The first part of tonight's doubleheader comes live from El Monumental in Buenos Aires as old rivalries are renewed. It's Argentina against Uruguay. Then we head 2,900 miles northwest to Bogota as a troubled Colombia take on the qualification tabletop as Paraguay. Four points out of the last possible 15 is a poor record by anyone's standards. But when you're Argentina, it's verging on a footballing disaster. All's not lost, though. Basile's side still sit third in the table, but will be only too aware that defeat tonight to Uruguay would see them out of the automatic qualification places. Welcome along. My guests in the studio, divided by a metaphorical river plate, uh, Ozzy Ardiles and Gus Poyet, welcome along, uh, gentlemen both. This is the original uh, derby game, if you like, in South America, isn't it? Uh, how important is this one uh, for Argentina tonight, Ozzy? Well, it certainly is. Um, when I used to play for Argentina, Uruguay, there were two teams that we wanted to win. One was Brazil and the other one was uh, Uruguay. This uh, is so strong, the, the rivalry between the, the, two, the two teams. Um, and the game today is particularly important because Argentina is not doing very well. Probably had the best squad in, in terms of individual player of all, I wouldn't say not only South America, but all, all over the world. A wonderful, wonderful squad. But they're not clicking together. They are not playing as a team. And because of that, we have had a, a series of bad results lately. I mean, a point in four points in 15 possible is, uh, is really, really bad. So uh, suddenly the manager, Basile, is under a lot, a lot of pressure. 30th of July, 1930, Uruguay won the first ever World mm. Cup, beating Argentina in the final. Gus, uh, I guess it's a history lesson that all Uruguayans are taught early on, is it? Yes, yes, um, especially for, for us. You know, we were born in a country where the, we were world champions in the 30s and 50s and all this rivality with Argentina. Of course, you take on board that and when you play against them, you, you try to, to do your best. It's a special game for, for everyone in Uruguay. But uh, you have to be realistic as well. No? In the last few few years, maybe in the last 10 or 15, we, we haven't been our best. Uh, I think Argentina has been in top all the time. Uh, this precise time, last qualification, they were by far the best team. Now they're having some problems, so maybe it's the best time for us to play them. Let's quickly look at one of those problems. Much of the debate in this game has been the inclusion or not of Raquel May in Argentina's starting lineup. Ozzy Basile has gone with Raquel May in this starting lineup. What are the pros and cons of his inclusion, and how big a gamble is this for Basile? Well, it is a big gamble. It is a big gamble if he play him, or it's a big gamble if he doesn't play him. Um, the big, big problem of Argentina is how to play together uh, people like basically Raquel May and people like Aguero Messi. They are much, much quicker than him, but obviously Raquel is much, much uh, quicker mentally. Uh, and this is the big conundrum that Argentina has at, at this particular moment. I personally feel that uh, Riquelme is a wonderful, wonderful player. And it's only, I believe it's only a question of time and suddenly they will click together. And when they do, Argentina will be, will be at the very best like it was in the America Cup, for example. OK, well, they haven't been clicking. Uruguay say they have been. Abreu has been in the press. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been saying in the build-up to this one that Uruguay, because of their unity, uh, and calling on all the resources they've got are a better side at the moment. Uh, Gus, what do you make of that? Well, I would say that I, I know very well Abreu. Loco is always uh, <laughs> yeah, trying to, to try to take advantage of this situation. Of course, uh, the way that we were playing, even if we, we were not better than Argentina, we look like we are a little bit stronger as a team. But if you look at the four offensive players of Argentina, like Ossie said, if they click, even if they click for half an hour, mm. 
-hmm. It could be uh, very difficult for us. So they have to be careful. But I think it's very interesting. It's going to be a, a, a very tactical game in the beginning. Uh, hard game. It's going to be probably really hard. I hope it's, it's not nothing over the top because, you know, I don't like to see any players uh, getting sent off. But it's going to be very interesting to see who imposes the game. It is El Monumental, the venue for the 78 World Cup final. Aussie with happy memories of that. Who will have happy memories of this game? Let's cross to our commentary team, Trevor Francis and Kevin Keatings. The demanding fans of Buenos Aires very much looking for a qualifying win. Argentina lineup, they've scored just three goals in the last six internationals, four of those World Cup qualifiers. Surprising when you consider the names on that team sheet. There was a lot of speculation on whether Raquelme would start. He does, but he's out of form. Juan Carrizo continues in goal for the injured Abondanzieri. Uruguay is still missing the injured Diego Forlan, the joint top scorer in South American qualifying. Porto's Jorge Fuchile returns after suspension, ruled him out of the goalless draw with Ecuador. None of this side plays their club football in Uruguay. Luis Suarez of Ajax has held off a challenge from Javier Chevanton. The informed Sevilla striker makes a substitutes bench following three years in the international wilderness. Talking of... The availability in reserve, Diego Melito has been recalled by head coach of Argentina, Coco Basile. He's back in Italy with Genoa and scoring freely again. Well, the Monumental is again the venue for Argentina to try and arrest this worrying slide in terms of results. They have drawn four and lost one of their last five South American World Cup qualifying games after starting with three wins out of three. Our referee is Carlos Torres from Paraguay. He was in charge of Brazil's 3-0 win in Chile last month, a game in which he produced two red cards. It will be Uruguay to get this much anticipated qualifier underway this is one of football's most historic fixtures the river plate derby dates back to the early 1900s you have to go back 21 years for uruguay's last win on argentinian soil and that copper america semi-final success their only one in the last 24 visits and 16 of those have ended in defeat for the uruguayans to say Trevor but all the pressure here is on Argentina and when you look at the lineup every department is oozing with quality but it's Uruguay who come into this game in much better form the last four World Cup qualifying games two wins and two draws they'll come here in confident mood but they know they're playing against an Argentinian side who will be looking to give this big home crowd kind of performance that has been missing in recent months. Well, Sebastian Abreu, the Uruguay striker who actually plays his club football as we've got a delay, as you can see, ahead of the scheduled kickoff for our referee, Carlos Torres. But uh, Abreu, who plays his club football in this stadium with River Plate, certainly stoked the fires ahead of this fixture and it's always a very passionate one by saying that Uruguay are achieving more with far fewer resources and I think in terms of the last five qualifiers in this campaign he's right but you also get the distinct feeling that those comments might well have been posted in the Argentine dressing room by way of motivation by their experienced coach Coco Basile it's a fixture that normally affords us goals. 22 in the last five meetings. Six when they met here four years ago in qualifying for Germany 2006. Argentina coming out 4-2 on that occasion. And the referee now finally appears happy. It is Argentina will play from left to right in the first half. Carlo 
Carlos Torres gets us underway. Tremendous atmosphere, as you would expect. Uruguay, of course, has a border with Argentina to the east of Argentina. And just three hours by boat separates the two capital cities of Montevideo and Buenos Aires. An early free kick against Tevez. Already seen two red cards in qualifying, the Manchester United man. bit of hesitation, eventually away by Castillo, the Uruguayan goalkeeper, who's only winning his seventh cap tonight. You have to say, Kevin, that Castillo caused himself a few problems with a poor kick-out. He certainly got in Suarez and Abru two big targets to hit, something that Argentina don't have. Look at Argentina, Messi, Aguero, Tevez, all very small, very, very talented. You just wonder if they're lacking an out-and-out centre-forward, just a focal point where they can hit occasionally. Well, Diego Melito would like to be that man. He has been recalled in the squad. But he believes that he, he is the reference point inside the penalty area should Casile seek to call upon him. Been in fine form, he's back with Genoa in Italy after his Spanish club were relegated from La Liga at the end of last season, Real Zaragoza. It is rather surprising when you look at the players that Argentina have got in advanced areas, and only scored 11 times in eight games. The other factor, of course, is that they're all very young. Messi just 21, Aguero only 20, and Tevez 24. Apart from lacking in height, they're lacking in maturity. And I just wonder if that's another factor. Yeah, I think that's a very valid uh, point, Trevor. Diego Melito, the player we were making reference to, has been around considerably longer than the front three for Argentina from the start. Melito is uh, 29. This is Lionel Messi starting off on the right. We, we expect to see that front three quite fluid. Certainly Aguero has started off down the middle, Messi on the right and Tevez on the left. Tina's free kick, whipped in by Raquel May. Expect to see him over all the set pieces as usual. A lot of talk about Raquel me in the build-up to this fixture. The feeling in some quarters here in Argentina is that when he plays well, the side play well, when his form dips, and Argentina generally can struggle as a team. It's a bit of a double-edged sword, really. It is, but when you consider the team have only scored 11 goals, as I already mentioned, and Raquel me has got four of them, yeah. that surely must have been another huge factor in his selection tonight. They do lack goals, and he's the main source of goals. Uruguay missing their top scorer in qualifying, Diego Forlan. Looks pretty much like a 4-4-2 for Uruguay. Abreu and Suarez, essentially the Two strikers are low, Rodriguez, who will operate down the left-hand side, does like to get forward, and he's got very good quality in his left foot. And it's going to be an interesting tussle, I think, between Christian Rodriguez and the vastly experienced Argentina captain, Javier Zanetti. And there is a challenge between Zanetti and Rodriguez there. We get goes to Uruguay. Too much doubt about that challenge. Very high 
quick raise from Zanetti. And this is an opportunity for Uruguay to load one or two of their big central defenders, Golden, Lugano, into the opposing penalty box. Comfortable take for Carrizo, winning only his fifth cap this evening. Much more experienced, have one down here, he is injured. Worked out nicely by Messi for Tevez. Guerrero's in the middle. Tevez in the area now as well. Trying to make further progress, but still the pressure on it's Messi! Argentina in front, and it's taken a little over five minutes. Lionel Messi, his first international goal in six appearances, relieves a lot of the tension at the Monumental Stadium. Well, for one who's not particularly big, it's surprising the amount of headers that he actually scores with. It's a great pick out at the far post. Once an opportunity was presented, Messi was quite clinical. Lovely measured header, the hand goes up. I thought immediately he was possibly offside. It was Eguren at the far post. He was slightly over covering, Messi free. Still had a lot of work to do. He took the header really well. Still not convinced though that he was actually onside. Well, there was always a feeling that Uruguay would come and attack Argentina. It's very much their nature, and they need to now. Message. Shirt of Lionel Messi. Relates to his father. I love you, Dad. Very keen to show this packed house. A tribute to his father. Messi scoring again for Argentina. Has to be a very positive sign. Down his pass, looking for Cambiasso. Rodriguez Mascherano, the Liverpool midfielder a great uh, lift to his confidence in the week as uh, Sanetti is forced to concede the corner good work there by Rodriguez no lesser person than Diego Maradona when asked about how Argentina should set up for this match, Mascherano and ten others, he said. That's how important the great Maradona feels that a Liverpool player is to this team. Just a reminder that Argentina started the ninth round of qualifying in this mammoth qualification period in South America. After this weekend, we'll have reached only halfway. In 12 months' time, we'll have finally got to the 18th round and last games for all 10 nations. And then we'll know the four automatic qualifiers and the team that finishes fifth will go into a playoff against the fourth best team in the CONCACAF region of North and Central America and the Caribbean. I have to feel that that playoff, at least on paper, ought to be easier than it used to be when it invariably was Australia who lay in wait for the team that finishes fifth in South America, but of course Australia these days play in the Asian qualifying section. And, uh, swift challenge coming in there from Mascherano. This is Rick Helmy. Tevez takes on Cuchile. Their 
challenge in the eyes of the referee. Got plenty of the ball there, Jorge Pichile. Free kick. And that's one against Abru. As you'd expect, Kevin, fiercely contested derby. One or two real challenges have come in in this early part of the game. I think the referee, very young. Referee in terms, just 38 years of age, isn't he? He's got to get a firm grip on this game. Carlos Tevez. Cambiasso. Now Inse. Barcelona teammates, of course, in direct confrontation on this side of the field. Messi up against the left back, Martin Cáceres. Painful run there for Mascherano. So inviting for Messi. As you rightly pointed out, Trevor, Aguirre, the player who didn't get to him. Well, the referee would have come into this River Plate derby with his eyes wide open, knowing that it's an extremely passionate affair. Your bets laid ahead of this match on the number of cards that this man will issue. Well, that's the second challenge that Perez has committed in the space of a minute, both over the top. He's very lucky to get away without going in the book. Not a particularly good header away, only as far as Tevez. And it's a chance! Not the post and in! Sergio Aguero! Makes it 2-0 for Argentina after Cambiasso had hit the post and Uruguay already well up against it here. Well, they've certainly been exposed, Uruguay, in that left-back position. That's where the opening goal came from. A delightful header from Messi. On this occasion, Cambiasso steals it at the far post. Probably should have scored himself. But Aguero makes no mistake. There it is, unmarked, Cambiasso off the post. Fortunately, Aguero reacts first. Great anticipation from the little man. He follows it in, strikes it cleanly. Sergio Cunaguero with his fifth goal for the senior Argentine national team on this the occasion of his 13th cap. Body language when Argentina took to the field tonight really did show that they were up for this contest. They'd been stung by the criticism that has come their way. And they are really looking the business here. In by Cambiasso! What a chance there for Messi to make it three. Brilliant play from Argentina. Tevez very much involved in it. When the cross comes in from Cambiasso, Messi steals a march on his marker, gets into the near post, and very nearly makes it three. Rodriguez. out wide by Perez. This is Chile. It's going to be 
too long for Abreu. That's a very good goal scoring record for Uruguay. Sebastian Abreu, 22 in 41 international appearances. And the need to find those shooting boots here in Buenos Aires. Great start for Argentina. about to say that I hope that uh, Uruguay don't miss Diego Forlan as much as his club team missed him last week in Living Madrid against Barcelona. But at the moment, it's deja vu, isn't it? it certainly is. in there, the referee spotted it, went against uh, Cáceres. He's got a natural left-back, the Uruguay number eight, he was also right-footed. So it's uh, not a position I think that he would be entirely comfortable in. It hasn't been in the opening 16, 17 minutes. Centre back, really, Cáceres. Whistle again, Suárez. awareness just summing up how eager Argentina have been in the early minutes it was interesting that he reacted quicker than the Uruguayan player that Uruguayan player was Abru the central striker not surprising really that an attacker back in his own box reacted slower than a defender it's a little bit of afters there referee quick to step in Aguirre who was down there. Kevin, that uh, the referee has been very, very lenient. It's been one or two nasty challenges already gone in. He's trying to let the game flow as much as possible. <laughs> Next up for Argentina after this one is a trip to Chile in midweek. It's another game we'll have for you. More details later on Sky Sports about our coverage this coming midweek. But, uh, Chile having a good campaign so far. Started the weekend in fourth. It's the last of the automatic qualifying places. Never an easy place to go. Santiago. It's a free kick against uh, Asherano. for Godin to get forward. Lugano, the captain has also made his way up from the back. Goalkeeper, how was he blocked off? Not in the eyes of the referee. Goalkeeper for Argentina, Juan Carrizo, is having strong words with the referee there. He thought he was balked there as he looked to come for the catch. Oh. 
Aguirrein. Suarez, it's a poor challenge. Really unnecessary from Di Michaelis when you consider that Suarez was not in a position really to threaten the Argentinian goal. Well, he's got a point, hasn't he, Carrizo? Clearly blocked off, no attempt for the Uruguayan striker to play the ball. Maneuver and uh, the Chile has lost out. They never lost out of the first time of asking. This is Rakelmi. Won't have the pace to drive towards the byline. It's a clever little back heel for Messi. Looking for room to get the cross in. Instead, he'll go back here to Cambiasso, who's uh, placed the ball out deliberately. Problem here for Mascherano. I can't believe what a risk Fuchelet took there at the back. When you're the last man, you don't take risks like that. He got away with it on one occasion, but then try to repeat it a second occasion. Very, very fortunate. He finally did lose possession, and Raquel me very nearly made him pay for it. There's all sorts of incidents going on out there, Kevin, off the ball. The referee's got his eyes in, the, in his back of his head here. A lot of late challenges, over-the-top challenges. It's rugged, it's uncompromising. I'll be more than surprised if we get through 90 minutes. Both teams remaining with 11 men on the field. Well, we know that Mascherano operates on a short fuse. We've seen that from time to time in the Premier League. Didn't like the challenge from Fuchile. Both players injured. Fuchile in the other half is still being attended to. It's Coco Basile, the man who came into this fixture under intense pressure after five World Cup qualifiers without a win. But he is, after all, the last Argentinian head coach to win. A trophy of any note. It was the Copa America 15 years ago. particularly angry challenge I felt that both players were committed for the ball but Chile looks as though he's come off the worst of the two well, Fuchile overran the ball quite clearly he followed through with his boot sh stud showing I think he knew what he was doing he caught Mascherano very high up just below the knee and the substitute is on this is uh, Cavani Edinson Cavani uh, in Italy with Palermo coming on for his third cap and he is a striker so Oscar Tavares has been brave here 2-0 down worst possible start for them but they like to play right throughout their international system Uruguay 4-3-3 No further part for Jorge Fuchile. But uh, Cavani will come on and play up front. That is an interesting substitution because there was a big discussion prior to the game. Uruguay at all levels play 4 3 3. But when we saw the lineup, it was quite clearly a 4 4 2. And now he's been big enough to change it. Good work here by Messi! Almost picked out the run of Aguero. And 
ball somehow spun back in there for Uruguay. It's a good run from Gabriel Ainte. by Argentina tonight. In the very first minute, they've been bang at it. But Argentina know they can't take any liberties with their opponents. After all, Uruguay are, along with Paraguay, the joint top scorers after eight rounds of this World Cup qualifying campaign. Goals. The, and the section leaders, Paraguay, have managed up to now. Zanetti. Painful wrap on the left knee, and the referee finally. He's got a card out here for that missed time challenge on Zanetti. Bigger end of uh, Villarreal in Spain is the first recipient of the yellow. Not a good tackle, that. You could hear the thud coming in. And the man who felt it was Zanetti. Look how high that is. That for me is a possible red card. So high above the knee. The intent was there. He's been getting himself quite wound up over the last uh, three or four minutes. Sebastian Egeren needs to calm down from his side's point of view. A big job on here. They can't afford to lose a player. delivery they are a threat from set pieces Uruguay Godin Lugano Abru Cavani three Argentina a free kick look actually less of a challenge on him there than the previous one when he didn't get a free kick his way isn't your only taste of South American World Cup qualifying. Let's we'll have another match for you later. Midnight Sky Sports 3, a very good match in prospect there. Colombia against the leaders in qualifying Paraguay. People's eyes. Paraguay have been the best team in inverted commas in this World Cup qualifying in South America so far. Not too many star names, but they are in every sense a team. But they'll be tested in Colombia, that's for sure. Now, Uruguay asking a question of the referee. Suarez went to ground, challenged by Dimitri 
but he was lucky there at the Michaelis. He got far too tight on Suarez, allowed him to turn him. Suarez went to ground a little easy. The referee could so easily have given a penalty. There, once he gets goal side, you see the arm go around the arm of Suarez. Immediately, Suarez feels that it goes to ground a little easy. But another day, could so easily have won a penalty. Always been a big rivalry down the years between these two. And of course, the two nations who contested the very first World Cup final back in 1930. Uruguay, proud to say that they lifted the famous trophy for the first time. Both have won it twice. A word there with Suarez, who was still complaining about the penalty shout. Cambiasso. Lovely <laughs> football. A lot of confidence in this Argentina side tonight. Zanetti foul this time by Cáceres. And a load good in his arguing right nose to nose there with the referee look at that the referee the challenge actually came from Catherine's and whether Golden was actually shown the card there's the foul from Martin Catherine's probably worthy of a yellow Golden's descent and a yellow instead so I saw it appears some of the control of the short passing from Argentina is an absolute delight to watch it's frustrating Uruguay, they're trying to get close to them in their faces, trying to get tight, put the foot in, but the first touch is so good, it's forcing them into late challenges. Too many of them are going in, in the book. Raquel Mink, teased in beautifully, flags up, one count. Bruno Kellis had heard the whistle along with everyone else. Absolutely nothing wrong with the header. Good example how to finish it off. The strong header. Ball comes in from Raquel Me. Well, that's tight, isn't it? I thought the first one could have been offside. They were certainly in the line there. I think Di Michaelis was onside. No doubts about the header. He dispatched it very clinically. Suarez. Get on to the return. Rodriguez, who was trying to link with Luis Suarez. Traditionally, this has been a very difficult fixture for Uruguay. A misplaced header and it's going to drop nicely here for Tevez. She's turned up in the nick of time by Perez, who now operating at right back after the injury to Fuchile. That was a vital uh, foot in there. I think Perez read the intentions there of uh, Tevez. Timely challenge, had to be right, he was inside the penalty box.
the playoff as his teammates would have hoped. Pretty inexperienced uh, player. Cavani, as I said earlier, only his third cap. And the first time he's figured in the World Cup qualifying. Trevor was mentioning earlier about the absent uh, Forlan. It's not just Diego Forlan's goal that's so important to Uruguay. This is an all-round link play, his movement so good. Cambiasso. Okelmi. Away cheaply by Mascherano, but how well he won it back. Mascherano, excellent crossing position here, and he's denied that opportunity, good challenge from Godin. It was a good challenge, but Mascherano just showed him a little too much of the ball. But once again, excellent passing movement, initiated by Mascherano with a brilliant sliding challenge, and lovely way to pass from Messi, sent in by Messi. It was an awkward one, that, for Castillo. I was about to say, if you sent Mascherano free on that right-hand side, things are happening so quickly here, you can't take your eye off this for a second. Short corner comes in, the keeper manages to get a right hand to it to deny another heading opportunity at the far post. On this occasion, it was Big Hainsey who had gone forward. Not the first time either, Trevor, with balls into that Uruguay penalty area where Argentina had at least one spare man on the covering defender. Concern, I'm sure, for the head coach of Uruguay, Tavares. Inse put through his own goal in the last uh, qualifier, or uh, one before last for Argentina. Maybe he was dropped to the bench and not used in the last game. Tevez getting a little wound up. Argentina were top of the world rankings in September. And since then, it was four run. South American World Cup qualifying, they've got to seven, the lowest placing for some considerable time. Not surprisingly, Spain on top of the shop after their win in the European Championships this past summer. Tevez. Raquel has been quite brilliant in the middle of the park. Everything goes through him. Out quite easily by Cáceres. Brought forward nicely here by Uruguay. Decent ball in as well, it's met by the right-footed Zanetti. It spins out for a corner. I thought Zanetti had attacked that really well. I was a little surprised that Abreu, the number 30, stands still. He should have got across the front of Zanetti. He was on his heels. Lugano and Godin, two centre backs forward for the corner. It stayed in. And a chance, and he scored Lugano. The Uruguay captain. Goals only his second goal for his country, and the big following from across the River Plate. The Uruguayan fans finally make themselves heard. It's 2 1. It was all about the second ball in Uruguay. They keep it alive. Good backup play. Squirms away. 
into a wide area. No, it was still in play. Lugano stays forward. He attacks it. Definitely in play. Lugano's there. Not a great connection, but he couldn't possibly miss. As long as he got something on it, he was always going to score. And the captain has brought Uruguay back into this game. First time they've really threatened the Argentina goal. And Diego Lugano scores. of this ground has fallen silent it's the Uruguayan fans we can hear at the moment Suarez test maybe now for Argentina after that superb start from the goals from Messi and Aguero. There has been a criticism of them, particularly in major tournaments when they've been in winning positions, they haven't been able to see it out in the past. But this is a big match for them without a winning five qualifiers heading into this evening in Buenos Aires. That brings attention and that ball to the dugout area. Troubling our Paraguayan referee at the moment. Kevin just reflecting on that important decision to allow Di Michaelis' head and goal some 10 minutes ago. If that had been allowed, that would have been 3-0. Surely game would have been all over as it is now. Lugano's made it 2-1. Uruguay right back in it. It's going to be a big talking point. Lots of room here for Christian Rodriguez. Takes on Zanetti. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, had the presence to take on Javier Zanetti there, Rodriguez. He's got a bit of pace about him. And here's the goal again. A lovely ball back in, and Lugano got the all important touch. Look, you look at the determination shown from Egger in there on the edge of the box. He did his job well. He made sure a second ball came back into play. There's Cáceres. Messi. Oh, he's just waiting to leave it. Found himself a free kick out of Rodriguez. Another ridiculous challenge, just eases the pressure of Messi. He's going nowhere. He's headed towards the touchline. The petulance from Rodriguez. Uruguay have been on a good run, unbeaten in four qualifiers. Two of those wins. This is Suarez. That stretching challenge from uh, Berdizzo held up Luis Suarez. Well, it was a good challenge from Berdizzo, but he stood off his marker. He was so deep. Aguirre. Chasing ball in. Cavani. From turning to get a shot on goal, and yeah. Not a bit of a problem. Argentina managed to close the door. What is very evident here is that the last five minutes, first time in the game, one or two questions have been asked of the Argentina back four, and they've not really stood the, the test. They've looked very, very shaky. Playing stoppage time in Buenos Aires. 
be a fair bit of that, I would think. But, uh, at least two fairly lengthy stoppages for injuries. In a bruising first half. We expected nothing less. Waiting for Di Michelis to stride forward from the back. Yeah, very comfortable indeed for Castillo, who releases early. Finds Suarez. Well, that goal by Zanetti. There's Aguero. And it does his way. A shooting position, denied that in the end by Cáceres, and then there was a trip by Aguero, free kick Uruguay. There was an appeal for a possible handball in here by uh, Verdiso, referee waved away Uruguayan claims. It's been a great first half, hasn't it? Proper cut tie this is. You get the distinct feeling we've not seen the last of the goals. And you also get the distinct feeling that the scorer of the third goal in this match had to be Uruguay, otherwise Argentina would have been on the way to three points, as it is, Lugano's goal has cut the deficit after those early strikes for Messi and Aguero. Great first half, 2-1 Argentina at the break. Goodness me, plenty to talk about at half-time. Ozzy was very happy. Gus is a little happier. Now we're at half-time. Find out what they think about it. In a game that Argentina grabbed by the scruff of the neck, Messi and then Aguero putting them two up. But then Uruguay came back. Make sure you join us tomorrow night. Brazil are in Venezuela. Alano and Rubinho of Manchester City start that game. Packard back for Brazil. That's tomorrow night, 9 o'clock. Sky Sports 1 is followed. Uh, by Ecuador against Chile. That's from 11 o'clock, Sky Sports 1. World Cup qualifiers, both of them. Uh, right now, we're in Buenos Aires. One of the oldest games in South America, this one. 1930 World Cup final. Uruguay won it, beating Argentina 4-2 to become the first World Cup winners. Right now, though, it's Argentina who are leading at halftime. Messi with one for his dad, who he says he loves on his T-shirt. And then Aguero putting Argentina in the driving seat, 2-0 up. But they would have switch off. And Uruguay would have come back into it. 2-1 at the break. Ozzy Ardiles and Gus Poyet are with me here in the studio. We saw Di Michaelis there having that um, header ruled out offside. Ozzy, for you, was that offside? <coughs> How much would it have changed the game if it was allowed? Well, of course, it will be 3-0 and the game will, will have been over, but uh, it was well disallowed, it was, it was clearly offside. Gus? Yeah, easy. This action is difficult. It's so many players offside, uh, but there's four Argentinian players. There's no any Uruguayan players in there. From the first action, you can see clearly that they are offside. Anyway, yeah, definitely it was it's a t totally different result. 3-0 for sure over. Now to one, I can see serious Uruguay is scoring or getting a player sent off. One okay. of the two. <laughs> Talking about getting a player sent off, how surprised were you? It took 27 minutes for the first booking to come. In fact, it took 12 passes in an Argentinian move for mm. that booking to arrive. Yeah, this is what Argentina has to has to do all the time. I mean, I am very very surprised that Argentina after scoring two goals, have everything in, in their favor. But somehow Argentina has not capitalized in, in, in the big advantage they have. This is what they have to do all the time, moving the ball around, moving and moving and, and moving. They, they will have a, a lot of uh, Uruguayan players 
Watson Pay and Thompson, el otro yeah. Yellow, Yellow Cars and so on. I'm very surprised that Argentina has not done that. Was it simply <coughs> the goal that changed the complexion at the end of that first half, Gus, or was there more to it than that? Did Uruguay suddenly get belief from that goal, or was there something tactical that you saw? No, in well, we made a change. Yeah, first uh, Fuchilio got injured, but we don't know how bad. And uh, we went back to the, our normal system, for, uh, system sorry, 4-3-3. But also it's the way that Argentina is not playing, because this is the perfect uh, time for Argentina to keep the ball and to make things difficult for Uruguay. But they stopped playing, and that gave us a little bit of relief. Of course, with the goal, they give you that extra bit. But, uh, but with the players that Argentina got, they should be playing much better football, especially winning at home. See uh, Basile there. Uh, Tabaras in uh, the Uruguay dugout, 125 years between them. Uh, those two, a couple of veterans of Yeah, we are younger. If you're that <laughs> way, you're younger. Yes, Not are. between you two. <laughs> uh, but Basile, how much pressure is he under right at this very moment? A lot, lot of pressure. I, I will say that these 45 minutes are going to decide uh, if he continues being the, the manager of Argentina or not. It will be a catastrophe for Argentina, winning 2 nil after 15 minutes and, and suddenly losing the game or, or drawing the game is going to be a catastrophe, as simple as that. Is he out of a job then? It will be, if, if it seems go wrong this 45 minutes, this is how important it is. And for the 45 minutes, the most important thing I would say is going to be the first 10, 15 minutes. Uruguay not out yet. This is Tapares doing a little bit of gamesmanship here. Gus, would you ever do anything Pro like this? Probably. Or? I'm saying, you know, we've done everything in South America. You don't imagine how many <laughs> things we try. Uh, don't know. I'm saying probably it's a, it's a special moment for Uruguay players. You know, they are all together in the dressing room just before going in for 45 minutes. And they have to change, you know, the results. So it's, uh, it's going to be quite uh, special. You know, the motivation now is going to be high in there. Uh, nice moment. I think there are moments that you realize. Even this, I would say, for most Uruguayan players, uh, it's good. You, you like to hear that because you know where you are. They make you feel like you're away. But it's, it's like, going to be interesting. It's like they're coming. What is going on there? This looks like they're coming out of some the assault tube. course. On well, the, that, that, on that's, secu the that's security. <laughs> <laughs> OK, second half. Uh, about to get underway then. Trevor Francis and Kevin Peters. Welcome back to the Monumental Stadium. Well, another section of the assault course still to be put in front of Uruguay. They've come from a 2-0 deficit to get that important goal from their captain, Diego Lugano, late on in the first half after a scintillating opening 25 minutes or so from Argentina. As good as we've seen them play for some considerable time, Lionel Messi, just one of the players who said that they were playing for their coach's future, as Ozzy Ardiles was pointing out, it's not fanciful to say that if Coco Basile were to lose this game tonight, then he could well lose his job. Such has been the fallout from four draws and one defeat in the last five World Cup qualifiers after a perfect start in the first three with a maximum nine points. Argentina were out on the pitch several minutes before the Uruguayans reappeared. Almost 20 minutes half-time interval. They do tend to make up their own rules uh, out here. And an important 45 minutes in both nations' qualifying campaign about to unfold. Cracking match so far, though. Not been the easiest to referee for the Paraguayan Carlos Torres. Not a lot of love lost between these two neighbours. No changes in personnel from the one that Uruguay were forced to make in the first half when Fuchile went off injured. He was replaced by uh, Cavani. Corner conceded by Godin. Argentina looking for a quick start to the second half. They certainly got from the outset 
this match. Referee spotted some pushing in there. Frank saying Cambiasso were in the mix. Well, it looked to me six one after than the other. There was plenty of shirt pulling going on as players were just in good position. Hainsey pulling Edwira onto the floor. But I think the uh, game plan of Uruguay will be to try and put the two central defenders of Argentina, Perdizzo and Dimitris, under as much pressure as possible. They didn't look comfortable in the last 15 minutes of that game, not a great understanding. Not too surprising, I should say, when you think that Perdizzo hasn't played a lot of football this season for Inter Milan. And Dimitris, the last time I saw him play for Bayern Munich, he was playing in the centre of midfield against Lyon. So he hasn't been playing regularly in the heart of the defence. And there looked to me to be a vulnerability about that partnership. Well, no, Fabrizio Colaccini, the Newcastle United defender. Vasile dropping him to the bench. Had been starting recent uh, matches. down on the touchline going through his paces down goes with Kelmy had a fine first half he's been in the best of form so far in the Argentine league with Boca Juniors one room under a Kelmy he had a very public fallout with one of his teammates who was complaining about his performances and he and Raquel me as though they patched up their differences and at least that's the story of anything out of the squad this week. The referee is producing a card here for Raquel me who looks perplexed by that. He thought he'd been given the opportunity to take the free kick. Referee clearly decided that he hadn't blown the whistle, that's all I can presume. That's why he's shown the yellow card. That looks harsh. Just think back to that first 45 minutes. Some of those challenges that went in that were unpunished. And the referee has put Raquel me because he had not blown his whistle. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic, I think I'd go along with that, Trevor. I mean, everybody was in place. Both Argentina and the defending side, Uruguay, no problems there for Castillo. So why the referee had to be so pedantic and produce a card there, and only he will know. the referee views that what does he feel that Rokalmi is undermining his authority there's Rokalmi now finding Tevez goes for goal and Castillo at full stretch to keep it out good effort from Carlos Tevez it was a good effort but it was equally as good a save from Castillo because he couldn't have seen much of that Suarez, the referee deciding that there'll be a free kick here. As, uh, well, the referee's going to card out again here. It's time for Luis Suarez, who felt that the ball was there to be challenged. He did appear to jump into Hainze. But once again, we've seen far worse challenges, haven't we, in the first half? Trevor, but uh, clearly the referee needing to be a little bit more strict than he could have been in the first half, certainly in the early minutes of the second.
Cáceres. Guerrero will look to close down. No lost courses when he's around. Suarez. How close is this? Well, it's close enough because actually Suarez wasn't offside, he was in line with the last man. Odiso was the man who was happy to see the flag from the assistant on this near side. He was the player that Suarez ran off there. It's definitely a weakness there. Uruguay are aware of that. Two central defenders, Gordiso and Di Michaelis, they don't complement one another. Just the one point separated these two nations in the South American standings part of this weekend. Argentina in third on 13 points. Uruguay just sitting outside the four automatic qualifying places. Their next match, incidentally, is up at altitude in La Paz against Bolivia. No one finds it easy there. Hopefully he decides that the free kick will go in favour of Uruguay. And yet again. This man He's fit to show another yellow card, this time to Tevez. Just wondering, you know, if somebody's had a word with the referee half-time, because the number of challenges that we saw go unpunished in that first half, yet he set his stall out now immediately to start the second half. He's already made, what, three or four yellow cards in this second half. I think Gus may be right. We're definitely going to see a sending off in this game, the way it's going. Suarez doing well, come out by Perdiso. This control met with howls of derision from the Argentinian fans in this packed house at the Monumental Stadium. Those two have been having a bit of a running feud, you know, Eguren and Mascherano. Keep an eye on that one. Pereira, a good header away, but the shot will not trouble Carrizo's goal from Luis Suarez. It's a good goal-scoring record for his country, six goals in 14 international appearances. And the middle striker from Ajax. It's a poor defensive header from Di Michaelis, doesn't get distance. Bel Massey, Suarez. Who composed himself and really should have done better with a shot. There's certainly goals in this Uruguay side, and Argentina haven't really found a rhythm yet in the second half. This is far from a done deal for the Argentinians, they'll know that. What that goal has done to Argentina has made them very tentative. They were a team 
absolutely oozing with confidence. It's shaken them, it's made them a little nervous. Well, luckily for Uruguay, all the free kicks have been outside shooting range for the brilliant Raquelme. He's got uh, four goals already in this qualifying campaign. I remember two sumptuous free kicks he scored against Chile. Messi. Flexion took it away from Tevez. I don't think that can be construed as a back pass. That was ambitious. Looks to be in some trouble. And Rodriguez was the player that went in for the challenge. He certainly caught Martin Di Michaelis. Well, from pretty early on, Trevor, in this River Plate derby, it's looked capable of boiling over this. Well, I think Rodriguez could be off. Definitely left his foot there and caught. Di Michaelis. Well, it looks worse in slow motion, doesn't it? The ball was away, he just felt that he could have pulled out of that, Rodriguez. The fact that he didn't means that Martin Di Michaelis is still feeling the injury down there. Are going to take any action against Christian Rodriguez? It would appear not. Dina Kellis is asking why not. That's a lucky boy, I think. saying there is you put Raquel me for taking the free kick before the whistle now they're wondering why it isn't being applied by the referee on that occasion <laughs> all players ask for is consistency Carlos Torres didn't appear to apply it there now finally the Uruguay free kick in there on uh, Bodiso. And, uh, this referee was flourishing yellow cards all over the place. We really going to have to concentrate here. Ince looks as though he's the latest in the book. Zanetti saying, well, you gave the free kick to us. It must have been descent of something from Ince. Do you suggest it was a nudge on Bredisel, Kevin? Was that the word you used? I wouldn't like to have been nudged like that when, when you played. <laughs> have a look at this. Pretty heavy, wasn't it, for Miguel? And that's what Ense was complaining about, that's why he was issued the yellow card. Di Michaelis is limping. We've got the uh, an able substituting Colaccini on the bench. Messi. Tevez. Raquel me. Raquel! 
to snatch at it. He wasn't too far away. Was he actually offside when he received possession? It's a brilliant effort from Aguero. No, he was onside. Good chance, wasn't it? been in of late we expected to see the ball hit the back of the Uruguay net from Sergio Conaguero Aguero now it is who's uh, got the latest injury looking to banish the memory of his last uh, club game uh, the losing side, Atletico Madrid team that got thrashed 6-1 at Barcelona. He hardly got a kick and was substituted in that game. A game that was pretty much built up by the media in Spain as Messi against Aguero. Well, it was Lionel Messi that made most of the headlines. A big game coming up next weekend for. Aguero, a little matter of the Madrid derby. And that's a game you can see live on Sky Sports incidentally next Saturday. And yet another yellow card, this time for Mascherano. Well, I don't think a red one is too far away from uh, this man's pocket. Well, I've lost count of the yellow cards, but I was convinced that some ten minutes ago Mascherano was yellow carded. I make it seven yellow cards now. And the worst challenge of the second half didn't get a card. And Christian Rodriguez, work that one out if you can. So the team claiming the ball was out, and it was. Unfortunately, there have been so many fouls in this second half, it's uh, somewhat spoilt the uh, game as a spectacle. It's been rather too fragmented, hasn't it? Yeah. Some high quality performers out there. The referee will apply advantage while he's moving forward. The referee has penalised Ainsay. for the free kick, that's a waste. They've had a run there by Zanetti, as far as Lugano. Forward with Menace is Lionel Messi. This is Raquelme. Run into his path for a shot. This is Carlos Tevez. Mascherano. I rather feel that was an opportunity wasted by Argentina. The final ball from Messi to Raquelme was underweighted. And as a result of that, Raquelme couldn't take the shot on, had to check back on himself. Cambiasso, Raquelme. Oh, out there, he was 
looking to try and switch the play, I think, to the right and saw nothing on. And he might be looking at a yellow card here. He's already been booked, hasn't he? He was booked for taking the free kick. Yeah. The way this referee's been handing them out like the proverbial confetti. There was a little nervy look over his shoulder immediately from Raquelme. Got away with it. We did get away with it. I'm not advocating that we should send Raquelme off. He's been such a wonderful performer in this game. But if you go by the rules, that was deliberate and he should have gone. says it has been a niggly second half fussy refereeing no discernible pattern since half time after a tremendous first half particularly from Argentina in that first 25 minutes or so built up that 2-0 lead with goals from Messi and Aguero but Lugano's goal shortly before half time was much more of a contest than it seemed uh, earlier in the match. Offside against uh, Suarez. Pretty blustery wind getting up now in the Monumental Stadium. Basile ready to make the substitution. Free kick goes against Messi. Car didn't like it. Good touch from uh, Abru. Is Suarez okay, against uh, Catherine's? It's going to be Ledesma. Who's going to come on? Who's a midfield player? About to win on his uh, third senior cap. His last was over a year ago. Cambiaso. Though Messi, a little bit lucky, wasn't he, Perez, to go away with that uh, follow through? He's very high when he caught his head. And I used to want it to be. <laughs> Basile has seen enough. He wants uh, fresh legs in the shape of Diego Melito and Christian Ledesma. A striker and a midfielder coming on. Conaguero is going to depart. Been on the end of a few fierce challenges, all part of the learning exercise for this hugely gifted 20-year-old who's made giant strides for club and country over the last 18 months or so. 
good to see Diego Melito back, number nine. In every sense of the word, he's an old-fashioned number nine, brings something different to the party up front for Argentina. It's planned up Roman Raquelme, who makes way for Ledesma. It's his first taste of competitive international football for Ledesma. He's with the current leaders in the Argentinian league, San Lorenzo. More qualifying from the South American World Cup as we prepare to see Uruguay bring the changes as well. Bueno and Shevanton, both strikers, about to come on. But we've got uh, a match in Colombia coming up for you later. Stick around for Colombia against Paraguay, who are top by four points in the South American qualifying. Should be a cracker on Sky Sports 3 next. Tevez. And Viasso will just get a little behind him though. Ledesma. Michaelis, Ledesma, lots of Argentinian classes, not taking them towards the Uruguay goal at the moment. The crowd enjoyed it though. It's the best spell of passing we've seen from Argentina in the second half. Very reminiscent of long periods they had in the first half when they were passing with great confidence. Second half hasn't been so. Christian Rodriguez. Come off. One comes uh, Carlos Bueno. And uh, Sebastian Abreu, who didn't really influence the game a great deal, has been replaced by Javier Chevanton, who is a striker in form. He's been getting uh, a regular game with his club in Spain, Sevilla. <laughs> So, <laughs> Rick goes against displeased looking Mascherano. Rodin and Lugano naturally have made their way forward from the back. more frustrating for Logano and the rest to see a poorly produced free kick like that. <laughs> Quarter of an hour left at the Monumental Stadium in Buenos Aires. Still some work to do, Argentina to find this elusive win with offside clearly against Melito Argentina have not won the World Cup qualifying game for 11 months now Eguren will do so across quickly the attentions of uh, Cáceres. Cavani suggesting that Codiso's making more of this than there was. And the players come together and have a little bit of Archibaldi again, if pardon the pun. Don't 
think they'll be handing out too many Christmas cards this year, these two. the replay as our South American colleagues have yet to show us whether there was any intent I'm not so sure there was really no I agree with you I think that uh, Diso is looking to get the Thara's into trouble there he's rolling around on the floor I'll be surprised if he's not up in a few seconds where well, he actually is up and I think he'll be back on the field to play very soon a little surprised that the referee hasn't decided a little earlier you know what 77 minutes into this game to get the two captains together to give them a lecture because some of the things we've seen tonight has been very unsatisfactory stakes are high we may only be halfway through this mammoth south american qualifying campaign after this weekend but for Argentina to go six World Cup qualifiers without a win, almost unheard of. Yet another player down, and a yellow card has been shown to the man who's just come on, Bueno. Yet another late challenge. Oh, right over the top, caught. Tevez on the top of his boot. I'm trying to think of a game where I've seen as many late challenges. I don't think there is one. It's a throwback to some of the ugly games we used to see many, many years ago in the 70s. Tevez. Caught there, in the opinion of the referee, by uh, Chevanton. First viewing, it looked... Uh, a little bit of a soft one, it's just his legs seemed to buckle and that's what Chevington's saying, was there much contact here? Well, yeah, he did catch him. Well, Raquel may would love to have been over this situation, but he's been substituted ironically a couple of minutes before they got their first free kick within range of a direct strike on Castillo's goal Tevez looks like he fancies it Good for Bediso. Zanetti. Curiously out from the back. Cambiasso leaves it for Tevez. Amelito. Nicely done by Diego Melito. Cut back brilliantly for Cambiasso. He couldn't keep his effort down. I think Cambiasso would have preferred if that ball had fallen on his left foot. Made up a lot of ground to get into the box. Clever play from Melito. Feints to come inside, back onto his left. Pulls it back. Shot from Cambiasso doesn't trouble Castillo. Cambiasso did score in the last qualifying game for Argentina, that 1 1 draw in Peru. Argentina looked as though they'd won the match, but Peruvians equalised three minutes into time added on at the end of the game. We win ugly, I think, will be the message for Vasile. A win's a win in his position. His job under the 
just intense scrutiny after four draws and a defeat in the last five qualifiers. But they're not yet, yet uh, over the line, Argentina. Never going to be an easy game for Carlos Torres to referee, but I don't think he's always made the evening as easy for himself as he might have done. Challenge in. And we are so awkwardly away. What a chance that was. Filney could have lifted his head at the back post. Suarez was open, unmarked. Great opportunity wasted. for time wasting. <laughs> Messi not in danger of missing the next World Cup qualifier. Argentina will be without Juan Roman Raquelme next Wednesday. For the trip to Chile. For his yellow. Here's Tevez. Looked like he was power trouble with the ball there by uh, Perez. Eventually, Messi went to ground and Argentina had their free kick. There's no finer player in world football. With the ball at the feet and Lionel Messi. It's like a piece of string tied to his foot. That wasn't a foul, but that is from Lugano on Messi. But prior to that, we saw a lovely dribble from Messi. Started off by pushing the ball through the legs of Egeren. Such a clever player. Uh, following the disappointment with the last free kick from Tevez, this one taken by Messi. Down on the night air by Castillo. Incidentally, he talked about Raquelme missing the next match. Referee got another card out. It's time to be shown to Diego Perez. And making that yellow card number 10. But uh, Raquelme missing the game in Chile on. Wednesday for Argentina, but Uruguay got their problems for their trip to Bolivia. Yellow cards this evening for Godin, Eguren and Suarez rule them out of that match. Messi. Ball in now Messi again. Squeezed out of it. Good work there by Pereira. Time running out for the Uruguayans. A little over four minutes plus stoppage time. And this fragmented, disjointed second half that mean too many goal scoring opportunities. Messi. Again, 
Messi's pass on the hit really offer any scope there to Tevez. This second half has been not a bit of it. They get three points. That's what it's been all about. However ugly this second half has been. <laughs> Whistles are a little premature. Hope the referee don't deem that handball to be deliberate. Three points for Argentina would take them into second place above Brazil who play on Sunday, away to Venezuela. More details on how you can see that match a little later. As uh, Cata Diaz is preparing to come on now for Argentina, defender. Plays his club football in Spain. With uh, Getafe. And it's Lionel Messi. He was on the yellow card, and Trevor was right, in fact, Handball offence had been deemed deliberate. He might have been looking at a second yellow and he would have missed the trip to Chile. But as it is, he will make it as he departs now. And Argentina seek to close the door by bringing on the big defender, Diaz. Double figures now for goals for Argentina. It's 10 this evening for Messi. Mascherano. Coach saying the side's challenge ever way here, although I suspect we're going to have at least three minutes of time added on. Alito looking to finish it, can't find room, and away comes Lugano. And, uh, a bit of push in from Bueno. The wind is very strong down there now. You can see the ball hold up in the air there, so he's come forward. The direction of Bueno. We've seen two sides, Trevor and Basile's side tonight. We know how expressive and talented they can be going forward. But I know you've got question marks about them defensively. Here now, a chance with the gaps opening up, Cambiasso. Tevez, now oh, he's dived. 
It's a risky thing to do when you're on a yellow card. And has already seen two reds in this qualifying campaign. Carlos Tevez. Chevanton. He was in his right there, Trevor, to put Tevez for the dive, you know. Absolutely was. And once again, Suarez shows lack of control. Something we've not said on too many occasions tonight, but he's been guilty of it on a couple of occasions. And he just throws himself to the floor. No contact from Golden. That's going to run out of play. But you, uh, you have some question marks about Argentina defensively. I do. I thought they were immense in the first half. Probably should have gone in more than two once they're good, but they were good value for that one goal lead. It made them a little nervous. Uruguay have tried hard in the second half, but they haven't really caused that many problems. And maybe they can now with this late, late corner. They almost reach out, grasp the nervous tension around the Monumental Stadium. So many draws recently in qualifying for Argentina. The goalkeeper, Castillo, joins everyone in there. Got his head to it, Nibiaso needs to deal with this. And still we play on. It's a nervous challenge, wasn't it, from Cambiasso? He knew that the Argentinian forward was... Sorry, I should say the Uruguayan forward was looking for a penalty. Cleared by Tevez, but not very far. Hooked back in again, and all the pressure taken off his defence. Uh, good claim from Carrizo. to practice his heading, doesn't he, the goalkeeper? Poor header. <laughs> he knew the importance, Basile, Argentine coach. He's trying to get his goalkeeper to take his time because he was looking to try and throw that out on the counter-attack. Just about there. Four minutes, stop his time being played. Poor throw out there by Castillo. But the referee has decided that that will be enough. Javier Zanetti on the night of his 126th cap is on a winning side at last. A first World Cup qualifying win in six for Argentina. Not pretty after the first 25 minutes, but they've made it 2-1 winners. Goodness, you can see what it means to them, can't you? Look at that. November the 17th, 2007. The last time Argentina picked up a win in these World Cup qualifiers. Three points, though, for them. 2 1 winners over Uruguay. Relief all round. And they're up two seconds in the table. Uh, go above Brazil. Uh, Uruguay stay in fifth. Top at the moment, still a Paraguay. And they can extend that lead in Bogota. We're off there in a couple of minutes' time. It's Colombia, who are the lowest scorers in the World Cup qualifier so far. They play Paraguay. That's on its way uh, a little later on. Right now, I've got Ozzy and Gus with me in the studio. Uh, fair result, Ozzy? Yes, fair result, yes. Uh, very, very nervous, Argentina. Um, more than anything, I would say it's relief that uh, we have the three points. It will be a catastrophe if not, um, but we didn't play well. Um, very nervous, very nervous the second half. We didn't impose our football. I mean, we have to say as well that the referee was incredibly poor and that didn't help. Didn't help Uruguay, didn't help Argentina as, as well, um, but he, he was very, very poor. But like I said, it's a, it's a feeling of, of relief more than anything else. How much credit should go to Uruguay for the fact that Argentina couldn't get into their strike, couldn't get into the game? Well, I think this, uh, it's difficult to say who was more responsible if um, Argentina for not being able to impose a game, Uruguay for the way they play, or even the referee stopping everything. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I never see a referee uh, blowing the whistle as much as this one. Uh, I'm saying we were closer to 
a little bit more close to the red card than to the second goal because I, I didn't see the Argentinian goalkeeper making a save. And that's something that probably the Uruguayan players should look into uh, in the next game. You know, when you want to win games, uh, you have to put the, the, the goalkeeper, the opposite goalkeeper under pressure. And, and we didn't really. It was, I don't know if we played more than 15, 16 minutes of uh, real play in the second half. It was unbelievable how many stops and how difficult it was to play the game. How much did you think, uh, Ozzy, in the opening 15 minutes of this? This is going to be vintage Argentina. Uh, and it was going to be a big score. 1-0 after six minutes, 25 seconds from keeper to back of net. Yes, it's a wonderful, wonderful start for Argentina, exactly what you needed, because uh, as you can see, there are a lot of nervousness in the, in the camp. It's nervous with the, with the manager, it's nervous with the, with the players as well. So to have this kind of start after 15 minutes, winning 2 0 is, is, is just like a dream, really. So I, I'm very surprised that Argentina was not able to, to impose their, their, their play. People like Riquelme, people like Messi, people like Mascherano and so on. From the point of view of Argentina, nobody played particularly well. Uh, but uh, the three points are, are incredibly important. Gus, why didn't they go on? That was 1-0. Uh, yeah. Aguero then made it 2-0 uh, after the ball came off the back of the post. Why didn't Argentina go on from here and, and not rack up a big score? Um, um, I don't know, really. It's, 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 I think it's worried for Argentina point of view because uh, they haven't been playing well. And they, they found themselves in this position. They cannot ask for, for, for better. I'm saying this is the perfect position playing at home, tune it up against a, one of the, the biggest teams you can play in, in South America with four unbelievable players going forward that they are uh, technically outstanding. And they couldn't pass the ball at all. I don't know if it was tactics from Uruguay. Every time they try to pass it two or three times, they stop it and it's a foul. And Argentina was not brave enough to keep it. They just tried to play forward. Uh, and try to go for a, a free kick, a normal cross or a shot. But it was nothing. I think it was a typical scrappy uh, Uruguayan Argentinian game. Uh, nothing else. And I, I think the Argentina, especially for the first 15 minutes, is, uh, is totally, totally deserved to win. Did Argentina think they won the game? How much complacency, if any, crept in, especially with the way Uruguay got back into it? Uh, I, I wouldn't say it was complacency. It was more than anything else, I would say, it was nervousness. Uh, it's, it's, it, it looked like it's not a very, very happy camp at the moment. I have to say as well that the defence of Argentina is looking particularly vulnerable. Uh, Uruguay didn't do much offensively, but uh, at the end of the day, it created a few chances. More, more, than anything, more than anything else, with the mistake that Argentina uh, did. For example, in the goal there, now it, it is very untypical of Argentina that the defender didn't react at all. The fact that Uruguay are at home to Argentina in the last qualification game Again? <laughs> of the whole tournament. If Argentina have qualified, could that help Uruguay? Or is it, it happened a few times. At straws there? It, it happened a few times. Uh, it's not easy to play South American qualification. Uh, now it changed a little bit because of you, because of television. But uh, in South America, remember that when you you try to take advantage for everything. If you go to Colombia, normally Colombia in the past, they would play at one o'clock in the afternoon, it would be 40 degrees in there. Or if you go to La Paz in, in Bolivia, you're gonna go over 3,000 meters. You mm. try always to take advantage of your own, uh, over your own qualities. Now, uh, it looks like everybody's playing at the same time, maybe because television's in charge, but uh, it's not easy. Every single game is like a final, and, and they become really important, it's like, a, I'm not saying a war because it sounds bad, but it's like, you know, the two countries really going for it. And at the end of the day, it's a football game. Will Uruguay, I'm, I'm not saying automatically, will Uruguay qualify for the, for the 2010 World Cup? We're in a good position. Um, we lost a few points at home that we shouldn't, but I'm saying it's still in our hands and that's important because it's, it's a long way. Will Argentina kick on from this? Is the monkey off their back now? Will they confidence rise after this victory here? Well, this is what we are hoping. But uh, in terms of uh, what Argentina did today tactically, the answer is no. Uh, it looked particularly vulnerable defensively. I'm very disappointed that Argentina didn't pass the ball a lot, lot more, winning 2 0 at home. It has to be a kind of fiesta time, and, and, and it was not. Mm -hmm. So there are a, a lot of worrying things. It's something is, is not happening. Uh, in midfield as well, it was only Mascherano and Cambiaso doing the midfield position and in, in a lot of in 
Uruguay have a lot of more people in this field. This is why things becoming very, very complicated. So yes, Argentina have a lot of talent, but uh, I, and I expect Argentina to qualify at the end of the day. Yes, but it's not, uh, it's, it's not playing as they should. OK, well, the team, they're all trying to catch at the moment. Paraguay, they're table toppers. They go to Bogotá. It's our live game. Colombia are up for this one, despite the fact that they've been struggling of late. They've got a new coach in charge, though. Can they turn their fortunes around? Colombia against...